everybody. Please give a round of applause for Jeff Zanini! for the next hour and a half. You have us locked in. I have stuff. Who likes free stuff? Now you know I can't reach the back of the room and I'm really sorry about that, but next year, plan earlier. All right, pay attention. I got more free stuff during the show. All right, there's a lot of stuff I wanna tell you. We're gonna bring them all up here. We're gonna do our usual stage picture before the show that we want all of you in it. So just get your phones ready when I tell you we want the lights on. But as you know, it's Salt Lake, it is PG, but it's PG-13, shh. All right, I was told to tell you there's a toy drive that we do annually and it is December 18th. Don't forget to come, there'll be special guests there, they'll be announced soon. All right. Follow us, Twisted Tunes, check the social media, please. That keeps us coming back, and all you crazy bastards in the back keep coming us back. All right. Last but not least, that music you were listening to on the way in, you all know who it was? Yeah! Rock Sugar! You can get that. You can get that digital download if you go to Jess's table. It's for sale. All right. Before we bring them up, I need the warm-up we always do, and it's got to be louder than Chris Provost, because you have no, much, I, no idea how much crap he gives me when you're louder for him. All right, on the count of three, we need the wall shaking. We have a first-time tuner back there, so wall shaking on the count of three. One, two, three! because we can't start, oh he's right there, we can't start without him. All right, first up, I see him right here, he's the brain, you guys, Maurice Pinky Rapunzel! Alright, now, I don't want to blow the surprise, but first, not only the first time on Tunes, the first con ever, and she waited to come to Salt Lake. Yeah. The new mini mouse, Caitlin Robrook! Yeah. All right, that was a Salt Lake welcome. Next we have Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, Jim Cummings! <laughs> Last but not least, your unofficial Salt Lake mascot, the rock star of voiceover, Jess Harnell! <laughs> We're gonna 
gonna do a crowd shot, all right, before we start. So everyone on their feet, get your phones out. We want those lights. This is gonna be on the website. You're all in it. Yes. All right, guys. Everybody, turn your flashlights on. Oh, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. We're gonna count it down. Oh, come on up here, everybody. Come on, come on up here. It's perfect. Oh, you guys, I can't believe it. Ready? On the count of three. <laughs> On the count of three, go nuts. One, two, three! Thank you! And that's our show. If we haven't even started yet, and we already oh, have. Oh, we're just getting warmed up. <laughs> we haven't started yet, and we have a very special guest. Whoa. And you guys are gonna love this because I know you, and I know this is gonna be one of those moments you never forget. But coming to the stage right now, you want to bring her up? Okay, we get the camera on her. She's going to sit with us during Twisted Tunes, and we're going to tell you all about her. New Purina Boxo Puppy. <laughs> this is Deanne, and she's going to take one minute and tell you about the charity and the, the rescue that they work for where you can adopt her. Yes, this is Little Girl, and she's a nine-week-old blue healer. She is part of the Rough Patch Rescue family. Right now, Rough Patch Rescue is a local nonprofit rescue that takes special needs animals from overcrowded shelters, animals with behavioral and medical special needs, like Little Girl. So Little Girl is in this box because she has a medical condition that makes it difficult for her to eat, and she has to be upright for the food to go down to help grab with gravity. We have a nonprofit fundraiser on her Facebook at Rough Patch Rescue to help raise money for her care. When she gets bigger, she'll need a larger chair. <laughs> She's melting into this. She loves being in her chair. But we want to just invite everyone to remember, adopt, don't shop. There are thousands of animals out there that need homes. Please remember to spay and neuter your pets and visit roughpatchrescue.com for more information. Thank you so much. She's going to join us for the panel. You notice, you notice that she's sleeping. Everybody's a critic. Oh my God. That's... Hey, you guys, before we start, I just want to take a minute. I, I want to say a couple things. First of all, I want to, we got to say thank you to Jeff Sinini for putting these things on for you guys all the time, right? So we got to take a second. I know it's been a long time since we've seen you. We missed you guys a lot. We're so happy we're back together. Thank you, brother. I, you know I miss you in particular, dude. But I, we, we got to say a thank you to Dan and Stephanie Farr and Jeff and Abby Wright for throwing this party! And finally, finally, a party is only good, is only as good as the guests who come to it. And that's why this is the best party in the world because of you people. So thank you very much. a lot of promotion. I hope you absorbed it. Hope you had a good time. See you next year. And just so you know, if you want her, we might have to fight because I might be taking her. All right. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready to find out what movie we're doing? Yeah. One of my favorite freaking movies, man. And that is why... I don't tell you ahead of time. That was wonderful. All right, let's go. Cool. In scene number one, we have, as the narrator, Maurice, Peter Falk. Yeah. For those of you that don't remember, he's the grandfather and the Princess yeah. Bride. 
Yeah, and keep an eye, if you have this lovely camera post, keep an eye on Maurice's face when he starts ripping his Peter Falcon. It'll blow your mind. That's great. <laughs> As the tinker, Jim, uh, James Brown. Wow! James Brown. As Charlie, Jess, yeah. Pee Wee Herman. Of course. <laughs> of course. As the newsman, Caitlin, Gwen the Unicorn from the Thundercats. Last but not least, Rob as Grandpa Joe, Dr. Scratch and Sniff. Okay. <laughs> Good idea. All right. When all of you are ready, we're starting right at the narration with Maurice. We're not going to sing the song? If you want to sing the song. I don't want to sing the song. <laughs> Maybe they want to sing the song. <laughs> Who can take the sunrise? Sprinkle it with you. Chocolate and a miracle or two. The candy man, the candy man can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. There you go. Very spit. The fan X choir right there. All right, there's a whole bunch of stage direction here. We open, I'm gonna save you a bunch of trouble. We open on a small town. Candy store owner sings that nice song where the kids all take the candy without paying. <laughs> really, it just lets them all behind the counter and one gives one girl a lollipop in a, an extremely uncomfortable way. <laughs> Seriously, go rewatch this. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Nowadays, that store owner would be, uh, would be canceled. You know. Anyway, back to the story. We see Charlie running around, throwing those papers at people until he stops in front of the Wonka plant and is encountered by another future child molester pulling a cart of butcher knives. Watch the movie. This guy never blinks. Not once. I mean, this is a children's story? There's been episodes of Columbo that are less creepy than this. And the movie didn't blink once. What's with the rolling cotton knives? Now, as he should, Charlie runs home as fast as he can, where he finds everybody eating cabbage. Cabbage water. Cabbage water. Men giving kids candy, walking around with knives, yet they're eating cabbage water at home. This doesn't make any sense. Where is this place? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, check it out. After I finished my paper route, I was in front of Wonka's factory, and there was this strange man there who didn't blink once. <laughs> he just looked up at the factory, and then he said, Nobody ever comes in, and nobody ever comes out. Yeah. <laughs> And, and right here us, Charlie, not since the tragic day that Willy Wonka, that little asshole, locked it. <laughs> Locked it? Why did he lock it? Was he in quarantine? Well, I'm going to give you a lot of exposition right now explaining that exactly. Because all the other chocolate makers in the world were sending in spies dressed as workers, yeah, to steal Mr. Honka's secret recipes, especially Slugroff. Oh, that Slugroff, he was the worst, and I don't mean bratwurst, he was the worst worst. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Wonka shouted, I shall be ruined, close the factory. And that's just what he did. He locked the gates and vanished completely. Boom. And then suddenly, about three years later, the most amazing things happened. The Alamaniacs were rebooted on Hulu. <laughs> I'm so glad because those adult diapers don't pay for themselves, let me tell you. <laughs> and suddenly, the factory started working again, full blast! And more delicious candies were coming out than ever before, but the gates stayed locked so that no one, not even Mr. Slugworth, could steal them. But, but Grandpa, so 
someone must be helping Mr. Wonka park his bicycle. I mean, work the factory. Yeah, well, thousands must be helping him. But who? Who are they? Is it a sweatshop situation? La 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 la. <laughs> well, that is the biggest mystery of them all. The next scene is at Charlie's school, all right? I'm not even going to say it. Just go back and take a look at the teacher. These poor kids. Charlie and the teacher, they mix chemicals, there's a puff of smoke. And then we learn about the five golden tickets. So all the kids leave school to go buy candy. Seriously, where is this town? And now, details on the sudden announcement that has captured the attention of the entire world. Hidden among the countless billions of Wonka bars are five golden tickets. And to the five people who find them will come the most fabulous prize one could wish for. A lifetime supply of chocolate! <laughs> That man is a genius. He sells a million bars. Hey, Grandpa, do you think I've got a chance to find a golden ticket or will I end up going back to prison instead? <laughs> Wait a minute, one. No, 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 I'm counting on you to find all five. As I said, those adult diapers are very expensive. <laughs> Yeah, finding all five would be good too. I'd make a fortune on eBay like all those people who have me sign Funko Pops here at the con. But one's enough for me. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. As Charlie, Jess, Roger Rabbit. As Veruca, Caitlin, Bobcat Goldthwaite. Maurice, as Mr. Salt, Bullwinkle. Um, oh, Rob, as Mr. Beauregard, Bill Clinton. Okay. And Maurice, as Wonka, Inspector Gadget. <laughs> and one last one, as Grandpa Joe, Jim, Darkwing Duck. Oh, yeah. Grandpa, Joe. Grandpa Joe, yes. All right, whenever you guys are ready. Okay, how a freaking bunga. <clears throat> Over the next 29 pages, we will learn that Augustus likes to eat, Veruca is a little biatch, Violet, Violet is a gross little brat, and Mike is getting a gun at age 12. Yeah. All the kids are approached by a Christopher Lloyd looking kind of guy offering them cash for candy, much more dangerous than Shredhead, thank you very much. Hmm. Anyway, Charlie finds a coin, buys a Wonka bar, discovers a golden ticket, and runs home to watch TMNT. the lucky finder of the golden ticket from Mr. William Wonka. Present this ticket at the factory gates at 10 o'clock and don't be late in the morning of the first day of October. And do not, I said do not be late. I think I said that. You may bring with you one of your members. No, wait, that can't be right. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. But no one else. If your wildest dreams, you could not imagine the marvelous serp rises. <laughs> that awaits you. Charlie, you've done it. Hi, Mook. 
Grandpa, and I'm super excited. Jeepers! But Grandpa, the ticket says I can take somebody with me, and well, I wish you could go with me, Grandpa, in spite of all the times you yanked my ears. <laughs> Is Grandpa Joe up? Oh, are you up? I think so. I never thought my life could be anything but catastrophe. And suddenly I begin to see a bit of good luck for me. I diddly, no, that's another song. <laughs> I've got a golden twinkle in my eye, and I have to I, go party. Thank you. Golden twinkle. <laughs> I don't know. A large crowd is gathered at Wonka's front gate. Willy Wonka emerges and the crowd cheers. <laughs> All the kids enter through the gates and they go inside. Now, hats, coats, galoshes over here. But hurry, please. We have so much time and so little to see. <laughs> Wait a minute, strike that. Reverse it. Thank you. Wonka pulls back the curtain to reveal a wall-sized contract. Violet, you first. Sign here. Oh, wait just a dang minute. You, I want you to hold on there, honey. I, I... Yeah, baby. Hi, my name's Bill. How old are you? take a moment to show you something I'm pretty dang proud of. <laughs> now let me through here you kids. Pilot baby, don't you sign nothing there. Now, now y'all gonna tell me what this is all about? Standard form of contract. Go, go, gadget, fountain pen. <laughs> <laughs> well now don't you talk to me about contracts, Wonker, or lawyers. Thank you very much. I ain't one no more. <laughs> I use them myself, and they're strictly for sucker. I mean, you know, people who vote against me. That's what I mean. Well, you wouldn't begrudge me a little protection. Just a drop. I don't sign nothing without my lawyer. Hillary! <laughs> my Veruca won't sign anything either. <laughs> but she will pull a rabbit out of my hat. Then she won't go in. I'm sorry. Rules of the house. Um, I want to go in and don't you dare stop me. <laughs> but I'm only trying to help you, sweetheart. Give me that gun! You're always making things difficult. I don't really love that. <laughs> yes, nicely handled, Veruca. She's a girl who knows where she's going. Violet? Uh, no, wait a second. Hold the phone, Junior. What's all that small print there at her bottom? I mean, the bottom. <laughs> if you have any problems, dial information. Thank you for calling. Mike? Augustus? Hey, what about me, Grandpa Duck? I don't know what the heck this thing says. Rabbits don't read contracts. <laughs> Sign away, Charlie. We've got nothing to lose, except our dignity, obviously. <laughs> Everything has to be in order. Everyone signed? Yes. Good. On we go. And sing. You guys having fun in the back? That's the crazy people back there. All right. All right. Next scene. As the narrator, Maurice Christopher Lloyd. Mr. Beauregard, Rob, Woody Allen. Okay. As Mrs. Gloop, Jim, Marlon Brando. As Mrs. Mrs. Gloop. As, uh, let's see, as Mr. Salt, Maurice Foghorn Leghorn. Yes. As Mrs. TV, Caitlin Schnarp from the Thundercats. Which Schnarp. Schnarp. Yes, as Mrs. TV. As Charlie, 
Caitlin. I'm also gonna have you be Nanny Granny from Doc McStuffins. As Grandpa Joe Rob, Pat Buttram. Okay, I'm sorry, who's that? Grandpa Joe. There's a lot of parts in this scene. Got it. As Augustus, Maurice. Let's see. Like, I'll come back to that. As Violet, Jim, Hondo from Star Wars. As Augustus, Maurice, we're going to do Yosemite Sam. And then let's see, last but not least, Jess, as Wonka, I think it's time for Christopher Walken. All right, I think that's all the parts. There's a lot of them. All right, whenever you guys are ready. And sorry, the puppy had a squirm. She, had, she left for a minute. She'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, they rush into a dead-end hallway. There we go. Chaos ensues. Oh, all they right. They exit the same door they came in. Wait, wait, what's that? The narrator's Christopher Lloyd. Oh, sorry. Hondo is Violet. Oh, I didn't think anybody was stepping up. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Hondo is Violet. Oh, oh sorry I don't about that. Uh, they rush into a dead hallway. <laughs> uh, chaos ensues. <laughs> they exit the same door they came in. It is all so different, Skywalker. <laughs> wow, you guys. I mean, look at this place. It's crazy. It's nuts. And yet, it feels like home. Could this be the great fan -X in Salt Lake City? <laughs> well, in any event, here we are. What is I say what is this, Walker? Some kind of some kind of fun house? Uh, why are you having fun? And more important, are you having fun? <laughs> Rick's just second, come on, Violet. Dude. We're getting out of here. Bill Clinton just texted me and he's taking me to a party. <laughs> no, wait, stop. You can't get out backwards, you gotta go up to go down, forwards to go back. This place is freaking cuckoo. You gotta press on. I say you're I say you're off your nut, Walker. No one can get through there. Hey, guy, don't talk about my nuts, it's weak. <laughs> my dear friends, you were about to enter the nerve center of the entire Christopher Wonkin factory. <laughs> this room, all my dreams become realities. And my realities become dreams. And almost everything you see is eatable, edible, whatever. You can eat whatever you want. Oh, let me in! I'm starving! <laughs> wow, crazy cowboy man, don't lose your head. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, the chocolate room. Woo! Hold your breath. Make a wish. Count to three or I'll stab you in the face with a soldering iron. <laughs> Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. You know what, Walken's not a singer. I'm gonna sing like Michael McDonald for a second. Yeah. Take a look see into your imagination. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm back. What a disgusting, dirty river, Jesus H. <laughs> God, I hope I'm not Mr. Salt. No. Oh, where's, where's Blue? He's it. Oh, did he? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that happens every day at work, don't worry about it. Yeah. <clears throat> we were saying in voiceover, if it's quiet, it's you. Yes. <laughs> it's industrial waste, that. You've ruined your watershed, wa I say watershed, Wonka. That's alliteration for you. It's polluted. No, it's delicious, guy. It's chocolate. That's chocolate! 
a chocolate river, in case you didn't know, <laughs> Einstein. Well, great gosh almighty, that's the most fantastical thing I ever did see. <laughs> I know, I know, it's great, right? And, and look at my waterfall, it's churning my chocolate. No other factory in the world mixes its chocolate by waterfall, but it's the only way if you want it to give you a fever. Because I, I got a fever, and the only cure is my chocolate freaking waterfall. It's the only way if you want it just right. They're little men! <laughs> well, holy snapping arseholes, Charlie! <laughs> now we know who makes the chocolate. I, I never saw, I say, I never saw anybody with an orange face before. But this was before Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> funny looking, I say funny looking people, ain't they, Walker? Oh. Hey, cowboy man, let's not judge, huh? Wait, whoa, hold the phone, it must be creaming and sugaring time. Well, they can't be real people, I'm going to eat one. <laughs> well, of course they're real people. They don't say stuff and nonsense. No, neither, they're oompa loompas from Lupaland. <laughs> They work cheap and I can carry them in my pocket. I love those little bastards. <laughs> and same. All right, we'll just keep trucking along. Next scene here as Mrs. TV Maurice Calculon from Futurama. As Mr. Salt. Uh, Rob, Mark Chang from Fairly Odd Parents. As Mrs. Gloop, Jess, Patrick Warburton. As Augustus, Jim, Snagglepuss. All right, that's why I like this crowd, because you get how twisted I am. All right, as Mike, uh, Jim, I'm also going to have you be Jack Nicholson. And I've held it off long enough. Caitlin as Willy Wonka Minnie Mouse. Jack as Mike. Mike. Okay. All right, while we're getting ready, who wants something for free? get you in the middle now. Yeah. All right, pay attention. Next time, you guys, wake the hell up over here. All right. Whenever you guys are ready. Wait a second. I'm taking a dramatic pause. Thank you. Usually you have to watch a cat food commercial for acting of that caliber, but I have unholy acting talent! Back to scene. Where I say the role of Mrs. TV. This is actually a movie called Mrs. TV. I don't know who Charlie and the Chocolate Factory are. Here we go. Looperland, there's no such place. I'm a teacher of geography. Oh, well then you know all about it and what a terrible country it is. Nothing but desolate wastes and fierce beasts. And the poor little Oompa Loompas were so small and helpless. They would get gobbled right up, left and right. A wangdoodle would eat ten of them for breakfast and think nothing of it. And so I said, Shut the 
the front door. I love your funny talking sound. <laughs> Snozwangers for vicious kids? What kind of rubbish is that? I'm sorry, but all questions must be submitted in writing. And so, in the greatest of secrecy, I transported the entire population of Oompa Loompas to my factory here. Mmm, slurp already. This stuff is terrific. Adequate, even. <laughs> Hey, Chubby, I know you're my kid, but let's save some room for later, okay? <laughs> That's nice. like we got a man overboard. Stand there. Here's some for my chubby little kitty cat. Help! Police! Murder! What? Dramatic pause. Woo! What is happening to him? Well, on Yugopotamia, we would say he looks like he's drowning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, dive in. Save him, Mouse. Oh, no, no, no. It's too late. Wait a second, wait a second. Too late? What the hell do you mean by that? Oh, he's had it now. The suction's got him. Whoop! <laughs> yes! I really like that funny sounding comedy word, suction. <laughs> no, wait, chubby little kitty cat, come back. Okay, seriously, Walker, where the hell is he? He can't swim. He's a cat. Well, there's no better time to learn. <laughs> well, there's his coat going up the damn pipe. <laughs> I've heard that you hit the pipe quite often too, Mr. Nicholson. <laughs> and he is stuck in the pipe. There, is it he, Wonka? It is his stomach that has done that. <laughs> Already, hell, <laughs> I'm moist. <laughs> and see. How about the new Minnie Mouse, you guys? What do you think? By the way, Caitlin Rob Rock, ladies and gentlemen. That's She'll be the first one to tell you that not too long ago she was one of you guys sitting right. up there watching these panels and now look at this girl go. How about that? Yep. Caitlin Rob rocks. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, next scene. As Grandpa Joe Jess Ironhide from the Transformers. As Mr. Salt Jim Richard Pryor. <laughs> As Mrs. Gloop. Caitlin Milhouse from The Simpsons. Maurice as Veruca Popeye. And also Maurice as Violet Dizzy Devil. Jim as the narrator Robert Stack. Oh, Maurice as Mrs. TV Robert De Niro. And Rob as Wonka. I think the fans want to hear Carl Weezer. Okay. Croissants for everybody! The first 
Whenever you guys are ready. Okay. Well, puny human, if you do not wish to see my Autobot cannons, you had best tell us what happens now. Oh, trust me, the pressure will get him out. <laughs> Terrific pressure is building up behind the blockage. You see, I know this because I myself have irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> well now, I wonder how long it's going to take to push his ass through. <laughs> oh, the suspense is terrible. I hope it'll last. This is terrible. When are we going to get back to the chocolate factory? <laughs> Augustus shoots up the pipe, looking like a rocket. He's gone! He'll be made into marshmallows in five seconds! Impossible, my dear lady! That is absurd! It is unthinkable! Why? Because that pipe doesn't go to the marshmallow room, duh! <laughs> You're a terrible man. You got that right. Wonka plays a short tune on the pipe. Whistle. And Oompa Loompa comes over. All right. Take Mrs. Gloop and maybe Mrs. Neutron. Straight to the fudge room, but look sharp or her little boy is liable to get poured into the boiler. script. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> All I know is Jimmy's mom has got it going on. <laughs> There's a fine line between funny and felony, isn't there? <laughs> Across the desert lies the promised land. Goodbye, Mrs. Gloop. Adieu, Auf Wiedersehen, Gesundheit. Farewell. Don't let the door hit you or the good Lord split you. Bye. Would you oompa loompa? Oh, did old uncle do that? Okay. Oompa loompa, oompa loompa, doompa dee doo. I got a perfect puzzle for you. Oompa loompa, doompa dee dee. If you were wise, you will listen to me. Optimus Prime is a vanicious commit. Now, you sure this thing is gonna flow? Isn't that right, Walker? Are you kidding me with your buoyancy, sir? <laughs> Rest assured. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Hey, Daddy. I want a boat like this. A beautiful paddle boat. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> What she wants is a kick in the pants from a 40-foot titanium robot. Um, here, try one of the... Oh, am I, is it you? I got a line here. I'm sorry, it's my show. Mm -hmm. I just opened my mouth to change feet. You step... Are you stepping on me? No, sir. Are you stepping on my line? Not at all, sir. I I'll 
see no other actor here. No, you gotta be stepping on my line. No, I'm just a booger eating spaz. I know nothing. All right, here's the line. I think I'm gonna be seasick. This is TV, George Takei. I'm sorry, who was that? You? Mrs. TV. Okay. George Takei. As Grandpa Joe Jim, Sean Connery. Uh, and you know what? As Mr. Salt, Caitlin, how about Butter Stotch from Salt Park? <laughs> because Wonka Jess has to be Cartman. Oh, God. Dude, I'm so trash, but I'll do my best. Let's see what happens. Did you say Mr. Salt? Yeah. Mr. Salt, no. Uh, Sean Connery is Grandpa Joe. Grandpa Joe. Yeah. Whenever you guys are ready. Good God. Oh, okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> now then, as Justice Friends assemble, the next scene is truly weird and drug-induced. But it, it was the 70s after all, and if it wasn't weird enough, here's Wonka. It's time for my super sweet boat song. Yes. I'm sailing. No, 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 not that one. It's this one. There's no earthly way of knowing, knowing. So the danger must be growing. Are the fires of hate are growing? Is the grizzly reaper mowing? Yes, the danger must be growing. For the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing. Respect my authority. Sorry, what did you say? Super sweet, you guys. Now remember, no screwing around, no touching, no tasting, no telling. No telling what, you little weasel. 
you see, Grandpa Joe, all of my most secret inventions are cooking and simmering in here. Old Slugworth would give his false teeth to get inside for just five minutes. So don't touch a thing or I will kick you in the nuts. Gotta hit you guys. The inventing room. It looks more like a Turkish bath to me. <laughs> oh my. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Even if Slugworth did get in here, he couldn't find anything. <laughs> Please tell me, who does your cleaning up? Well, yeah, you should be wearing rubber gloves when you're cleaning up, otherwise you'll get grounded. And you'll have the health inspectors after you. You know that, don't you? You, you, you know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Invention, my friends, is 93% perspiration, 6% electricity, 4% evaporation, and 2% cheesy poofs. Wait a minute, that's warp factor 5%, oh my. <laughs> Butter Jean, you've got something going on inside of here, up in here in this little vault right over here. Butter's candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker, and Kenny would know because his dad's an alcoholic. <laughs> hey, stop! Nobody looks under there! This is the most secret machine in my entire factory. This is the one that's really gonna sizzle out Slugworth. Ah. Oh. What's it do? <laughs> well... Would you like to see? I'd like to see what it... Can! Go! Oh, <laughs> I bet you would. But screw you guys, I'm going to Salt Lake City. And see. <laughs> All right. We'll move quick here. And the next one, <laughs> as the narrator, Rob Haji from Johnny Quest. Okay. As Violet Maurice Hedonism Bot from Futurama. As Charlie Caitlin Witch Hazel from Looney Tunes. Yeah. And you know what? We're going to do a little Rick and Morty here. So, as Veruca Jess, Scary Terry. <laughs> I'm sorry in advance. I'm sorry in advance for this. As Mike Rob Snowball. Okay. And as Mr. Salt Maurice Aberdolph Linkler. <laughs> and last but not least, folks, it's time to bounce. As Wonka Jim Tigger. Okay. Okay, here we go then. Wonka pushes a button. The machine goes through a long process, then produces everlasting gobstoppers. My, my, such a long process. Uh, but what's it do? <laughs> How did I get into this cartoon? Can you see? It makes everything gobstoppers. <laughs> everlasting gobstoppers. Did you say everlasting gobstoppers? <laughs> well, not really, because I can understand you, but that's close enough. See, for children with very little pocket money, you can suck them forever. <laughs> Just checking. Very lightning bolts coming down. <laughs> never know. In that case, I want an everlasting gobstopper in my hotel room, bitch. <laughs> Ooh, uh, me too. And me, and perhaps my testicles. It's a fantastic invention, no longer invention. It's revolutionized the industry. You can... You can suck them and 
suck them and suck them, and they're never getting any smaller. At least I don't think they do. Maybe a few more tests are in order. so much, Tigger. It is now very clear why that is the happiest place on earth. <laughs> May I ask, how do you make them? Uh, sorry, I'm a little trifle deaf in my tail, speaking in my ear, <laughs> and a little louder next time. And who wants an everlasting Godstopper? <laughs> you guys have done this before. Look, I can only give them to you if you solemnly swear to keep them for yourselves and never, ever, ever give them to Piglet and show them to another living soul as long as you all shall live. Do you agree? Agree! Agree, bitch! Agree! Oh, good. Well, in that case, there's one for you, and one for you, and one for two for me. And, okay, talk amongst yourselves. Hey, wait a minute. She's got two. Give me another one, bitch. Oh, stop squawking, you twits. <laughs> well, now, everybody has had one, and one is enough for anybody. Now, come along. Oh, I almost had to sing there. Now, over here. Now, if you follow me, I have something rather special to show you. <laughs> well, it's special, all right. I only hope my Veruca doesn't want to be emancipated from her own inferior genes! My, what a contraption. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Isn't she scrumptious? She's my revolutionary, non-pollutionary, mechanical airy, wondrous wonder. Now, button, button, who's got the button? <laughs> it's over there, by the broom. You know, I ride a broom myself, and I sit side saddle. It proves I'm a lady of quality. <laughs> yes. Now, what you are witnessing, dear friends, is the most enormous, miraculous miracle of the Magnachine Age, the creativity and the creation of a confectionery giant, Finito! Aw, that's all, bitch? <laughs> yes, bitch, that is all. <laughs> Don't you know what this is? Okay, no one heard that. Ooh, by gum, it's gum. Wrong, and it's not honey. It's the most amazing, fabulous, sensational gum in the whole world. Ooh, what's so fab about it, by the way? <laughs> well, thank you for asking. This little piece of gum is a three-course dinner. No, I'm serious. All three. Count them. There's one. <laughs> and... Oh, boo! There you go. No, roast beef! Ha! That's comedy humor. <laughs> but I haven't got it quite right yet. Ooh, I don't care. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. <laughs> and see. Hang on just a sec. Can I just say, the folks over here doing the signing, how about these people? Right, yeah. Yeah. God bless you for trying out this one, guys. Thank you. If, you. if you happen to see a little explosion, it's one of their heads popping. Because they're just trying to keep up. Great job, kids. Man, oh man. Yeah, I apologize over there for making your job harder. All right, as the narrator in the next scene, Jim, how about the Tasmanian Devil? As Wonka Jess, Kermit.
Brad the Frog. And how about we do Pinky in the Brain? As Violet, Maurice will be the brain, and as Mr. Beauregard, Rob, Pinky. Okay. All right, whenever you guys are ready. All right. <clears throat> so long as it's gum, then that is for me. <laughs> now, Violet, don't go do anything stupid. <laughs> Madness. It's tomato soup. It's hot and creamy. I can actually feel it running down my throat. <laughs> yes, it's delicious. No, no, wait, stop, don't. And every chew gets better and better. Oh, that sure is great soup. <laughs> oh, the second course is coming up. Roast beef and a baked potato. <laughs> With sour cream. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've always wanted to say this. What's for dessert, baby? <laughs> Only because it's written here on the script, Pinky. Otherwise, I would have to hurt you. <laughs> Dessert? Oh yes, here it comes. Blueberry pie and cream. The most marvelous blueberry pie I've ever tasted. Hey, God, Brian, what is happening to your face? Cool it, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> yes, but your face is turning all blue. Violet, you're turning blue. Once again, Pinky, I'm forced to ask, what are you talking about? I uh, told you I hadn't got it quite right yet. <laughs> well, you can say that again. Look what it's done to my brain. Yeah, it always goes wrong when we come to the dessert. Always. Violet, Milo, what are you doing now? <gasps> you're blowing up! I feel funny. Oh, you're blowing up like a bloody balloon! No, I'm like, like a bloody blueberry. Yep, yep. It happens every time. They all become blueberries. Help. Help. <laughs> we, we've got to let the air out of her, quick. Oh, uh, there, there's no air in there. What? Yeah, that, that's juice. Juice? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wonka plays his pipe whistle. And an Oompa Loompa appears. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy, Jimmy. Oh, oh, hello. Would you roll the young lady down to the juicy room at once, please? Well, I would, but what for? Oh, oh, for squeezing. She has to be squeezed immediately before she, well, you know, explodes. <laughs> Oh, it's a fairly simple operation. Ooh, I will get even with you for this one, Cara. If it's the last thing I ever do, I've got a blueberry for a brain. Yes. <laughs> and I've got some questions. Where is fancy bread? In the heart or in the head? Shall we roll on? And while we're asking questions, why are there so many songs about rainbows? Little children gone, three good, sweet little children left. Hurry, please, long way to go. Moving right along, foot loose and fancy free. Getting there is half the fun. Come share it with me. Oh, yeah! Fancy. Yeah. We'll make this a musical one way or another. All right, who's having fun back there? Man, that never gets old. All right. Next up, as uh, Mike, Maurice, Kiff Croker from Futurama. Yeah. Um, as 
Grandpa Joe, Rob Donatello from the Ninja Turtles. As the narrator, uh, Caitlin, Ralph Wiggum from The Simpsons. Uh, Jess, as Veruca, Ozzy Osbourne. Hell yeah! Um, as Mr. Salt, I have Rob, how about bringing back Fraggle Rock? Yeah! Yeah. Yes, so as Boober, we will We're be doing Boober. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one line from Mrs. TV, Maurice. How about Dizzy Devil again from Tiny Tunes? I like that one. For Mrs. TV? For Mr. Mrs. TV, yes. And as Wonk, oh, I'm sorry, as Charlie, Caitlin, Felicia Sundu from Amphibia. <laughs> and as Wonka, Jim, Ray the Firefly from oh. Princess and the Frog. All right, while well, they're getting ready, who else wants something? Oh, that was a floater. All right, whenever you guys are ready. Did you do your line? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my goodness gracious, I missed my line. So sorry about that, everybody. <clears throat> Grandpa, this banana is fantastic. It tastes so real. Well, get you some more. The strawberries taste like they made of strawberries. That's how good they are. The snozzberries taste like snot. Oh, that can't be right. <laughs> snozzberry, there you go. <laughs> Snozberries! Who ever heard of a snozberry show? I'll have what he's having. We're the music makers, son, not unlike yourself. And we are the dreamers of dreams and things of this nature. Come along, come along. Here comes some narration. <laughs> Well, now I know what you're thinking. They can't be doing what they're doing. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure you are thinking that. <laughs> but they are. They have to. Now, I haven't met an Oompa Looper yet who could do it. These are the geese that lay the goldenest eggs you ever seen, child. Now, as you can see, they're larger than ordinary geese. As a matter of fact, they're quadruple sized geese, which produces octuple sized eggs. Oh, we're getting into the math now. They're laying overtime right now for Easter. Woo! You know that's right. But Easter is over. Shh! Don't tell them that, fool. <laughs> now look here. They don't know that. I'm trying to get ahead for next year. <laughs> Well, what happens if they drop one of those eggs, Wanda? An omelet fit for a king, son! Oh, I love these chocolate eggs! I love chocolate eggs, man! Let's get crazy! <laughs> oh, he must be fun at home. <laughs> Golden chocolate egg! That's a great delicacy. Now, I, 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 I wouldn't get too close, you see. The geese are very different. 
Ego. That's why they have the egg and the ooh, ooh. That's a big old word right there. Egg decatur. Oh yeah. Egg the what? I don't know. I can't say it twice. But they can't. There's no difference between the good egg and the bad egg. It's a gold egg. It's a good egg. It's all shined up and shipped out all over the world. But if it's a bag egg, bad egg, oh, down the chute. Well, that would make it an educated educator. Yes, I think it's a lot of nonsense. Thank you. You know, it's a little nonsense now and then to be relished by the wisest of men. Hey, Sharon, I also get a golden goose so I can bite its head off, man! <laughs> pages, Faruka sings a spoiled brat song and falls down a garbage chute with all the other bad eggs. Her father follows. Then the Oompa Loompas sing another choreographed song. And then they ride the Wonka Mobile and they all have Wookiees and they all scream as they're doused with bubble suds. <laughs> and Wonka keeps singing in German as they go through a 70s version of a special effects show. And now we're back to the story. <laughs> I hope they do books on tape. <laughs> Welcome, Vision, y'all. It's my latest and greatest invitation. Ugh, it's television. No, 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 it's Welcome, Vision. You see the W? Now, I suppose y'all know how ordinary television works. You photographicate something, and then... Yes, of course I do. You photograph something, and the photograph is split into millions of tiny pieces. They go whizzing through the air down to your TV set, where they're all pulled together again in the right order for the episode of Futurama where I say, Sex, Lexia! <laughs> You should open the, your mouth a little wider when you speak. <laughs> and so I said to myself, self, if they can do it with a photograph, a picture, why I can't do it with a bar of chocolate? So look out, son, here come the chocolate. And I can now send this chocolate bar from one end of the room to the other. And it has to go a big, on account of because whenever you transmitify something to television, it's all the end up a little smaller on the other end. That's just the way shit go. Uh, go, 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 please. Lights, cameras, traction. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> All right, we'll moving running. on. We got two scenes left. We have enough time, right? They're not going to throw us off. I know it hit zeros, but I think we have 10 minutes left, so hang on. All right. In the next scene, we have as Charlie, uh, Jim, Mike Tyson. As the narrator, or actually as Mrs. TV, Maurice. Let's bring back Hedonism Bot, because we had a lot of fun with him. I want him back. All right, and it's time, I think, for the Warner Brothers. Good idea. As Mike, In other words, it's time for an... No, I'm sorry. As Mike, Jess, Wacko. And as Wonka, Rob, Yakko. Okay. Now we need one line as the narrator. We're missing Caitlin, so... Hey, Robbie, Robbie. Rob. Robbie Paulson? Robbie Paulson. Should we warm him up and give him a hello to so get in character? Ready? One, two, three. Hello, Fan X! Hey. Now we're ready to do this. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, as the one line is the narrator, Maurice, we're going to have Tony Soprano, oh, James yeah. Gandolfini. Okay. <clears throat> Whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. Where, 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 where the chocolate at? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's flying over our heads in a million pieces. Now, watch the screen. Here it comes. There it is. And take it. Oh, it's real. It's amazing. Yeah. It's Wonka Vision, hotshot. Yeah. 
tell me something, Dadu. I mean, Mr. Wonka. Can you send other things? Not just chocolate, I mean. Anything you like. Well, it seems like this would be a great way to get rid of clowns. So, what about people? People, hmm. Well, people who like people are the luckiest people in the world. I just know that. <laughs> I don't know, really. I suppose I could. Yeah, well, yes, I'm sure I could. I'm Yappa Warner, for God's sake. I'm pretty sure I could, but it might have some messy results. Wow! Look at me. I'm going to be the first animaniac to be set by television. <laughs> oh, Mike, I mean, Wacko, get away from that thing. Yeah, stop. Don't. Come back. Lights, camera. Ooh, Wacko, where are you? All right, all right, hang on. Tweak it a little bit. There's definitely something coming through. Is it Mike slash Wacko? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to tell. I see a spleen and a scapula, but I'm not sure. Oh, look at me, everybody. Wow, what a fabu trip that was, even though I did have to stop for a potty emergency. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me, and I'm still not wearing any pants. <laughs> am I coming in clear? I said, am I coming in clear? Great. He's completely unharmed. You call that unharmed? Oh, don't worry about a thing, Mom. I feel fabu. I'm famous. I'm a TV star. I'm like a Kardashian, except I'm not a horrible person. Wow! <laughs> Woo Wait until Dot hears about this. Nobody is going to hear about this. Well, fortunately, small boys are extremely springy and elastic. So, I think we'll put him in my special taffy pulling machine, and that should do the trick. Ooh, taffy. <laughs> you are one creepy SOB, you know that? <laughs> to the taffy pulling room, Sibs. You'll find the boy in his mother's purse, but be extremely careful. <laughs> taffy, taffy pulling room. Oh my, smelling salts in the couch and a vat of the finest creams and oils to dip me bottom in, repeat. <laughs> yeah, well, consider my case rested. <laughs> and now, my dearest lady, it's time to say goodbye. No, 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 don't speak. For some moments in life, there are no words. Run along now, adieu, adieu. Parting is such sweet sorrow. All right. It's sure to have the loop of song here. <laughs> uh, as we head into the home stretch, we cut to outside Walker's office. <laughs> so much to do, so much to do. Invoices and bills and letters. Oh, I must answer that note from the Queen. Um, Mr. Walker, <laughs> um, what's going to happen to the other children? Augustus and that annoying little weasel, Veruca. Yeah. You know, I'd love to chat with you, but I find it so disconcerting that you have a tattoo on your face. <laughs> but don't hit me. <laughs> My dear boy, I promise you'll be quite all right. When they leave here, they'll be completely restored to their normal, terrible old selves. But maybe, just maybe, they'll be a little bit wiser for the wear. Anyway, don't worry about them. Um... Good night, everybody! <laughs> and see. You know, if you guys don't mind, I just want to take one second and say, seriously, you know, I've got to come back to this show several times. I missed you guys last year. But I want to speak for all of the people up here at this table when I tell you that all my great friends and these amazing people you have before you have come up to me individually and said what an amazing time they had at this show, how they can't wait to come back, and how much they love you guys. So thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you. this you can meet all of them come yeah, down to the tables they'll be signing if you want any merch there'll be tunes table down there I'll throw these out in a minute all right we would love to see you guys the last scene as Wonka Jess Arnold Schwarzenegger as the narrator Maurice Morbo from Futurama 
We're bringing back as Grandpa Joe, Rob, Carl Weezer. And last but not least, as Charlie, Jim, Winnie the Pooh. You know we love you, Salt Lake. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah. who wants the free stuff? Good job. Ah, oh, those things get out there pretty far. And Jeff will oh, throw it up. If anyone got hurt, Dan has insurance. It's okay. And <laughs> all right, here we go. Last scene. That's right. Jeff will happily pay for all the eye surgery. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, what do we do now, Mr. Wonka? Yes, well, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Excuse me for not showing you up. I'm terribly busy. The whole day was wasted. Goodbye to you both. Get out. Goodbye, cutie little booty boys. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Excuse me, but I don't know what you said. And did I do something wrong? I don't know, Charlie, but I'm gonna find out. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Mr. Wonka! I am extraordinarily busy, tiny guy. <laughs> I just... Good gracious, you're one big dude. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you about the chocolate. The lifetime supply of chocolate for Charlie. Um... When does he get it? He doesn't get it. What the f <laughs> Why not? Because the little bear broke the rules. <laughs> what rules? We didn't see any rules, did we, Charlie? I didn't see any rules. I know I didn't see any rules. Wrong, sir. Wrong. Under section 37B of the contract, signed by the Mushy Bushy Tushy Boy, it states quite clearly that all offers become null and void if, and you can read this for yourself in the photostatic copy, I, the undersigned, shall forfeit all the rights, privileges, and transfers herein, and herein incorporated, etc., etc., tax mentis, incendium, gloria, corpum, etc., etc., memo, peace, peace, punito, delicatum. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You stole the busy lifting drinks. You bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be washed and sterilized. So you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Get out. Get to the chopper. Yeah, baby. That was awesome. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're a crook. You're a cheater and swindler, just like Mr. Neutron. That's what you are. How can you do a thing like this? <laughs> All his dreams to pieces, you're an inhuman monster! <laughs> I said good day! Alright, come on, Charlie, let's get out of here! I'll get even with him, it's if it's the last thing I ever do! I'm gonna smack his llama right in front of him! <laughs> if someone wants a gobstopper, who's gonna get one? A long pause. <laughs> Mr. Wonka. The puny human Charlie leaves the gobstopper on Willy Wonka's desk. <laughs> I will destroy you. <laughs> so shines the good deed in the weary world. Charlie, my boy. My rooty tooty fresh and fruity boy, you won! <laughs> you did it! You did it! I knew you would! I just knew you would! Oh, Charlie, forgive me for putting you through this. I had to test you, Charlie, curly, wetly, stubby boy. And you passed the test! You won! Gah! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? You won the jackpot, my dear sir. The grand and glorious jackpot! The honey? Yes, yes, the honey, the chocolate, but that is just the beginning. We have to get on, we have to get on, we have so much time, so little to do. Wait, strike that, reverse it. We'll take the Wonka Vader. Step in, Charlie, Grandpa Joe, sir. This is the great glass Wonka Vader. Oh. I, I, it just looks like an elevator. 
Stop it! Stop whining! Your mommy's not here to wipe your little tushy for you! It's a walk -a An elevator can only go up and down, but the walk -a can go the sideways and the slant ways and the long ways and the back ways. And, and front ways too. Yes, and the square ways and the front ways, any other ways you can think of, it's very sexy. <laughs> It can take you to any room in the whole factory just by pressing one of these buttons. Just press a button and zing you off. And up until now, I've pressed them all. Except for one. This one. You go ahead, little bear. Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> Me? <laughs> yes. You? Hold on tight, I'm not sure where it's going, and English is my second language, so this whole thing is hard for me anyway. <laughs> faster, faster! If we don't make up enough speed, we'll never get out! The walk evader crashes through the roof and flies into the sky. The special effects are state of the art! Regular elevators do not work this way! Good night! <laughs> now tell me, how did you like the chocolate factory, Swappy Boppy, Teeny Boppy Boy? Well, I don't know what you said, <laughs> but I think it's the most wonderful place in the whole Hundred Acre Wood. <laughs> I am very pleased to hear you say that, little bear, <laughs> because I'm giving it to you. That's all right, isn't it? Wait a minute, you're giving Charlie the... Yes, yes, I can't go on forever, and I don't really want to try. So who can I trust to run the factory when I leave and take care of the itty bitty loompy loompies for me? <laughs> now the grown up, no. The grown up would want to do everything his own way, not mine. This is why I decided a long time ago I had to find a child or a bear. <laughs> a very honest, loving child or bear to whom I can tell my most precious candy making secrets. Like this snuggly, wuggly, buggly boy. I still don't know what you said. <laughs> but is that why you sent out the golden tickets? <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yes, that's right. So the factory is yours, Charlie. You can move in immediately. The whole family. Except maybe this cute little grandpa guy. He's coming with me. <laughs> But Charlie, Charlie, don't ever forget what happened to the man who suddenly got everything he always wanted. Okay, I'll bite. <laughs> what happened? I'll tell you later. Now shut up and kiss me. <laughs> Turn them on, 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 turn them on.